Okay, we're at the outside drop tower at DMM and what we're going to do today is uh, do some dynamic testing on slings. And the two slings we're going to use, 11mm Dyneema and 16mm Nylon. And they both have different properties and this will probably come out in the test. Um, what we're going to do is use an 80 kilogram mass, which is what we use in the climbing standard for the uh, EN tests, and do a full factor one and a full factor two fall. Full factor one fall, we've got our <coughs> recording device up here which will record the uh, impact force. We have the sling and we'll attach the mass here and so what will happen is that the mass will fall, it will fall 60, another 60 to make 120 and that will give you a full factor one. So it's not a huge fall then we'll do one where we take the full fall, the height of the sling, so that's 120, it falls 120, and then another 120 to reach the, the bottom extent. Uh, and that's full factor two. And then we'll do the same uh, test again, but we'll tie just a knot inside on the sling in the middle, an overhand knot, something simple like that. Now the relevance of this in a climbing situation is that at a belay people do quickly think oh I'll just attach myself, make, make myself safe, I'll just clip myself with a sling to the anchor point and often there'll be a bit of slack in it. Now is that important? And that's what we hope to find out today. In other words if I fell off backwards with this, this amount of slack is it going to generate much force? So we're going to record the, uh, the test results here, the 80 kilogram mass we're using 11mm Dyneema and we're using 16mm Nylon and we'll do three samples of each test. First test, full factor one with an open sling, 120 centimetres and full factor one sling with an overhand knot tied in it and then full factor two with an open sling, full factor two uh, sling with an overhand knot. Okay so the whole point of the test today is to find out the impact force is generated in a, a belay situation where you might quickly clip into the belay with a 120 centimetre sling and if it's irrelevant that there's any slack in that sling. The sampling rate that we operate on this test is about a thousand samples a second so we get a very accurate uh, idea of what's going on over a very short sp space of time and that's why we can look at you know examine the impact forces and, uh, and see how the slings are behaving. Right, well we've got the results from the, uh, the drop tower and the tests we did out there and uh, they make pretty interesting reading. Um, all the results are in kilonewtons which is um, a measurement of force. Um, so 20 kilonewtons is roughly equates to two tons. Two tons is a unit of mass whereas kilonewton is a force which is basically a mass that's moving. But anyway, 20 kilonewtons, two tons. That gives you a ballpark figure to play with. 10 kilonewtons, one ton. And the results we got here, <coughs> they're all recorded in kilonewtons. And on some of the uh, 
little squares where we filled in, we put a little star in the corner and that's where the sling broke. So if we turn this round, we'll have a little look and see what we did. So four factor one, open sling, 120 centimetres. And we did three tests <coughs> on the 11mm Dyneema. And the, the forces we got, the, the impact forces, that's the highest peak loading force that we got from the 80 kilogram mass falling, was 23.2, 21.5 and 22.9. And there's actually a star next to that one indicating that that sling broke. So the reason why these impact forces are so high is because the climber, the 80 kilogram mass, when they fall, they accelerate very rapidly. And Dyneema is pretty non-elastic. So it's almost like being attached to a piece of steel. And so there's no absorbency whatsoever in the Dyneema. And so you get these massive impact forces. And those forces on the human body would cause a lot of damage. And also 23 kilonewtons, 21 kilonewtons, 22 kilonewtons, they are very high forces. So you're looking at, you could possibly snap the sling. You're also getting close to the breaking strength of the al aluminium carabiners. During the test, we use steel carabiners because they're much stronger. And so we knew they wouldn't break. And of course, if you're attached by a, you know, a walnut or something like this, they're rated about 12 kilonewtons. So you'd easily break a nut or something that was in the crack. Okay, so when we compare the 11mm Dyneema with the nylon, nylon tests on this uh, 4 factor 1 open sling, we've got 12.2, 13.1, 13.1. Significantly lower impact forces and no breakages. Now the reason the impact force is so much lower is because that nylon has qu quite a lot more elasticity in it than Dyneema. Still significant, bearing in mind that a kind of a typical leader fall may only generate between four and seven kilonewtons. So we're already looking at, you know, very hard, you know, falls there if you were doing this in a falling situation. And we've only fallen, or the mass has only traveled 120 centimeters. We've tied a knot in this, and both cases, we didn't bother the third, because we knew what was gonna happen, but it, it broke the sling at a very low force compared with what it was surviving up here and that's simply the effect of an overhand knot being tied into a Dyneema sling. It reduces the strength by that much. Now when we look at the, the 16mm nylon slings this is a bit more interesting and a bit more difficult to get your head around really but we suddenly see that the impact forces have actually reduced by having an overhand knot in it to when it was just an open sling. Now the reason for that in this case is the nylon again is absorbing but we, since we've tied a knot it's acting, acting rather like a shock absorber so the knot is tightening so delaying the, uh, the, the high impact force and so it's, it's an energy absorber so it's spreading it over time so therefore the, the impact force is being reduced uh, not by much and it's still you know a high level you know we're still at you know, 10 kilonewtons you know a ton in, uh, in old money if you like. So tying an overhand knot on a Dyneema sling is pretty catastrophic. Tying one paradoxically on a 16mm nylon um, has uh, reduced the impact force. We repeated the experiment with a full factor 2 on both the Dyneema and the, the nylon. So what we're getting here, you know, the, uh, the mass, the 80 kilogram mass has had 240 centimetres to accelerate, so there's a great deal of energy there. It's, it breaks the 11 mil Dyneema without any effort. Um, the nylon, interestingly, does hold on the open sling, but at a greatly, greatly in, you know, enhanced impact force. So we're at 16, 18, 17, so there are really big impact forces. And of course, if you tie a knot in, then the Dyneema obviously breaks but also so does the, the nylon. And so here's an example of what it, it does. Here's the overhand knot. It's been completely crushed down on the Dyneema and it's broken at the knot. That's where, that's where things break. And so the same, exactly the same, is on the nylon. Okay, so we've been using 120 centimeter slings to do these tests. And you'll probably say, oh yeah, but I only ever connect onto a, an anchor point with 60 centimeter, it's much shorter. 
Well, we did that test as well. And with a full factor one, 60 centimeter sling. So that means anchor point, mass or U, 30 centimeters down, 30 centimeters up. So that's a 60 centimeter sling. So you're only falling 60 centimeters. That's two foot in old money. Let's have a look at the forces. So 16.7 kilonewtons. Now that is still a very high impact force. Um, and then if we repeat the, the experiment with a 60 centimeter sling with an overhand knot tied in it, you can see that the sling broke, there's the little star, at 10.2. And so even falling that short distance, and here is the very one. So there it was, that's how it started life. It fell that distance, 10.2 kilonewtons, which is about a ton, and the dynema broke out the knot. So even though you might think that that's not a significant fall, if you're attached directly to a belay, it is and the forces are still great and you will break equipment. So in summary, let's just recap. <clears throat> Having slack in the system is bad news. It only takes a relatively small fall and the impact forces, the forces generated, rise rapidly. So that's bad news. Um, there's a difference between nylon and dyneema. Nylon is more absorbent, absorbs more energy over time, and so it re reduces the impact force. But Dyneema is very abrasion resistant, and it's also very resistant to chemical attack as well. So we don't just dismiss Dyneema, it has different qualities, different properties to nylon. Um, and it's uh, horses for courses. It is much lighter, much greater st strength to weight ratio, if you like. And the, f the falls you need to take to generate high forces are very small. We looked at the 60 centimetre one, we fell 60 centimetres, that's only two foot, and we were breaking or generating very high impact loads and indeed breaking a sling when it had not tied in it. So knots, I like tying knots in, while although not wrong, will reduce the overall breaking strength of your sling. And all these forces were all up, you know, generally above 10. We're getting very close to where think nuts, like walnuts, are rated 12 kilonewtons. So most of these forces would have broken your anchor if you were directly attached to it via a sling. So best thing is use a rope because it is much more stretchy than a, a, either a nylon sling or certainly a, a dyneema sling. Uh, but you just have to be aware of what you're doing with, uh, with slings. And uh, there's nothing technically wrong with attaching a sling, just don't have any sl slack in the system, and uh, if you can, use a rope.